What if you could build more muscle by working out during a certain time of the day? What about if certain workouts are more likely to actually lead you to gaining body fat? Wouldn't that be useful information to know if your goal is to improve your body composition? Well, it turns out there are a lot of important things that most people simply don't understand about working out. So today I wanna to go over 10 major things that you probably don't know about in regard to lifting weights and exercising. And first, let me start by answering that there actually is a better time of the day to work out in regard to strength and muscle building purposes. According to the science, you're likely to be stronger in the evening and you'll build more muscle with evening workouts compared to earlier workouts. You see, your body has an internal clock known as the circadian rhythm. Due to this circadian rhythm, you're stronger, faster, and you have a more beneficial hormonal status at certain times of the day. For example, in a 24-week long study, researchers compared one group that did their workouts between 6.30 in the morning and 10 in the morning, and a second group that worked out between 4.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. The results showed that those who trained later on in the day gained much more muscle, and you can see that in the graph included in this study. Other studies have also found comparable results. For example, bodybuilders were divided into two groups, one that trained before 10 a.m. and another that trained after 6 p.m. And once again, the bodybuilders that worked out later on in the day gained significantly more muscle. So why are evening workouts more effective for strength and muscle growth? Well, first, post-workout muscle anabolic signaling is higher later on in the day. Second, you have a more favorable testosterone to cortisol ratio in the evening. Core body temperature also peaks later on in the day, which enhances muscle activation, energy metabolism, nervous system efficiency, and blood flow to your muscles. All of this allows you to perform better, leading to faster progress. So if your schedule allows for it, ideally you'll want to work out between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., although a more flexible guideline is to train sometime between 2.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. Next, something that most people don't realize is that strength training doesn't necessarily translate directly into making you better at other sports. Just because you have big muscles doesn't mean you can now swing a hammer harder, throw a ball further, sprint faster, or land a harder punch. Sure, strength forms the foundation of many physical activities. For example, in order to sprint fast, you need to have at least a decent amount of relative strength in your legs. But strength isn't the only component that's required in the real world. Once you've built a certain level of strength, improving your athletic performance from a physical perspective is usually more about becoming more explosive than becoming stronger amongst many other attribute improvements. So if you're using resistance training to become better at another sport, make sure to also train specifically for that sport in explosive ways, which you can do by performing workouts involving things like plyometrics, medicine ball tosses, or sprinting drills. Another thing that I bet you didn't know is that some people are actually non-responders to exercise. We have a study where 585 people trained their non-dominant arm for 12 weeks, and on average the participants' biceps got about 19% bigger and the maximum weight they could lift increased by about 54%. However, the range of different responses to the training was huge, as you can see from the graph on the screen, which shows the percentage changes in muscle mass for the participants of this study. So you can see that the average participant increased their bicep size by 19%. But something else that this graph shows us is that some participants didn't gain muscle at all, and others even lost some muscle. So even though they all followed the same plan, genetics played a big role in the overall results. Now, if you've been training for a while and you haven't seen the amount of muscle growth that you were hoping for, that doesn't instantly mean that you're genetically doomed and you should throw in the towel because we have another study that showed that there were no non-responders when people were put on personalized training programs instead of a one-size-fits-all cookie cutter program. This study found that all the participants on the personalized programs got stronger while only 64% of the participants on the cookie cutter program were able to get stronger. This provides more evidence that non-responders in scientific studies aren't necessarily true non-responders. It's more likely that they just need a more individualized approach, likely with more training volume. So if you're stuck, try increasing the amount of sets that you do for a given muscle group within every week. Next, let's talk about weightlifting belts because they actually don't really reduce your risk of injury and may even increase the risk. Most people are under the impression that lifting belts reduce lower back injuries, but weightlifting belts can actually cause more injuries for two main reasons. One is that the belt allows you to lift around 5% more weight 
when you lift heavier weights, there's a heightened risk of injury automatically. The second reason is that if you overuse the belt, like the people that you see using it from the beginning to the end of their workouts, it can make the muscles that are naturally responsible for bracing your core weaker. Muscles like the transverse abdominis are supposed to get stronger when lifting those heavy loads, but they don't get the necessary stimulus if the belt does all the work for them. The third issue is that the belt can give you a false sense of security, causing many people to lift with bad form. Now, this doesn't mean that you should just never use a belt. Just remember to maintain good form and to do plenty of sets without the belt, maybe with a lighter weight load, to strengthen the natural muscular belt around your lower back and core. Moving on, let's talk about unilateral exercises since they are generally better than bilateral exercises if you're forced to choose. If you're like most lifters, you primarily do bilateral exercises, which are exercises where you train both sides of your body at the same time. An example is the leg press. Bilateral exercises, however, are not ideal from a muscle building perspective. Unilateral exercises are actually better in many ways. Unilateral exercises refer to movements where you focus on one limb at a time. Examples include single leg leg presses, dumbbell lunges, or dumbbell presses. Unilateral exercises are better because, first of all, humans didn't evolve for bilateral exercises. Almost every natural activity is unilateral, or at least asymmetrical, such as running, striking, throwing, climbing, and so on. Second, research shows us that, all else being equal, unilateral exercises generally have higher levels of muscle activity and force output per limb compared to bilateral ones. Researchers call this the bilateral deficit. The bilateral deficit is especially prevalent for beginner lifters, although it's also very common for more advanced lifters as well. Due to this difference between limbs, training each of them individually helps you ensure that both sides actually get the same stimulus instead of relying more on one side of your body. Another reason why unilateral exercises are more efficient is because you'll generally end up with higher levels of muscle activity from those exercises, which could make them better for muscle growth. Regardless, this doesn't mean that you just throw away exercises that use both limbs at the same time like bench press and squats because thanks to the bilateral deficit, you will likely be able to lift a heavier overall load using both limbs, which can help you get stronger and that can lead to more muscle growth as well. But make sure that you're not just bench pressing. Also include exercises like dumbbell presses to get the benefits of unilateral training. Next is this idea that if you're injured, you should automatically take it easy. In reality, active recovery is generally better than doing nothing. One thing that most people don't realize is that there are only a very small handful of injuries that make it impossible to train any other part of your body while you're injured. For example, even if you dislocated your shoulder, you can still train your lower body. On top of that, research indicates that active recovery actually speeds up tissue repair, mainly by improving blood flow to your connective tissues. Connective tissues in general receive very low amounts of blood flow when the surrounding muscles aren't active. Tendons and ligaments have about seven and a half times lower oxygen delivery than muscle tissue does, which is why it takes longer to recover from a tendon injury than a muscle related one. So staying active helps get blood cells that carry nutrients over to your injured tendons and ligaments. Now, don't go overboard. If you feel pain while you're exercising, stop what you're doing. You shouldn't experience pain because if you do, you're likely doing more harm than good. But slight discomfort while you perform active recovery is okay and can actually help speed up the recovery process. Another thing you should know is that deloading is overrated and generally counterproductive. Deloading is actually done by taking the fourth week of each month completely off or by reducing training volume or the weight load for that week. Sometimes if you've been overtraining, these deloads can really help. However, deloads are usually not beneficial and instead they can be counterproductive. One reason for this is that muscle fatigue is a local process, which means that if your biceps are fatigued, it's not gonna affect your squat. So there's no reason to stop squatting just because your biceps haven't fully recovered yet. The second reason is that once you're past the beginner state, your muscles will generally recover from any workout within 72 hours, even if you work out very hard and do a lot of training volume. So there's no reason to automatically take a week off every four to six weeks. What can be beneficial is a reactive deload. This means that whenever your muscles, joints, or energy levels feel beaten up, you can take it easier that day or skip the workout altogether. Don't get me wrong, this isn't an excuse to not train hard or to skip workouts. Instead, it means if you're so fatigued that you're not able to train at least somewhat decently, take it easy that day and allow your body to recover for your next workout. 
The next thing that nobody tells you is that working out and getting fit is definitely not all sunshine and rainbows. Most Instagram models have you fooled that they live the perfect life, but there are some downsides. The first downside is that at least one of your muscles will likely be sore almost every day of the week. In fact, on some days, your legs might feel like jello when you walk down the stairs, and it might feel incredibly painful to simply squat down and sit on a chair. You'll also likely experience injuries along the way. While there are many things you can do to minimize your risk, there's no bulletproof way to prevent them altogether. If you train hard, you will likely experience injuries at one point or another. The key is to be mentally prepared and accepting of these kinds of negative experiences that will come with working out. This way you don't completely quit once the going gets rough. Another thing that most people don't realize is that static stretching before a workout will actually impair muscle growth and exercise performance. An example of a static stretch is the sit and reach, or any stretch where you would hold that stretch position for a given period of time, usually 15 to 30 seconds. Even though every trainer used to think that this was a great idea, it turns out that stretching before exercising doesn't reduce injury risk, according to a meta-analysis of over 360 studies. Worse yet, you could argue that static stretches might even increase injury risk because it'll relax the muscle before activity while creating small cellular damage within the muscle tissue being stretched. Static stretching can also reduce strength and power output, especially if you hold the position for a long time. It doesn't take long either. One study found impaired muscle growth after static stretching for just 50 seconds before lifting weights. So instead, do a warm up to raise your body temperature and then do a few exercise specific warm up sets before moving on to your heavy weight load. Last but not least, you have to understand that there really is no secret. Beginners are especially prone to shiny object syndrome. Usually they're searching for that one magic secret that'll give them the physique of a fitness model in record time. Supplements, fat burning teas, special gadgets, newly invented workout routines, bizarre crash dieting methods, whatever it is, too many people are looking for that magic bullet. Sorry to bring you the bad news, but that doesn't exist. There are no secrets that'll help you get shredded by tomorrow. It all comes down to the simple, boring basics, like optimizing your calories, getting enough protein, following a progressive resistance training routine, getting enough high quality sleep, and so on. Those are the only things that truly work. So instead of looking for that one magic solution, focus on the basics and being consistent with them instead. So that about wraps it up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you'd like any extra help, you'd like to lose 20 pounds or 5% of your body fat or gain muscle in the next few weeks, check out my six week shred where you'll get a customized diet plan, a full workout plan, a recipe book, and a coach to guide you through the entire process. You can check it out either by clicking the link below or heading straight on over to gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.